I do like the look in Twitter here, so I'll show you very quickly. I'm sorry, my co-founder wasn't able to make it today, so I'm having to uh, jump through and multitask here. But we can see that there's a new Utah that's been listed. You can click on the link. Um, and if you're on a desktop, you can play it right within the Twitter feed. Now let's jump back into the home screen of Utah. Sorry, I've got too much going on here. Um, so when we first launched our Utah Alpha, we partnered with a podcast to allow their listeners to jump on the Utah app and use it to talk back to the podcasters. That's where we're really going with the vision of Utah is providing an engagement platform for these audio broadcasters, there's a lot of problems. They don't know how many people are actually listening to their podcast or terrestrial radio for that matter. Also, Utah provides um, podcasters and these station owners with marketing tools to uh, send push notifications, let their listeners know there's new content. You can see here that this podcast called In This League has a lot of activity. The host can, can send quick audio as well as letting their listeners respond. They can download the Utahs that are posted and even play them back on the podcast. The goal is to really create more of a community around content and brands. And uh, so you have loyal listeners that are downloading more, allowing uh, broadcasters to uh, uh, sell more advertisements. Right on time. <laughs> and is the audio going out because I'm coming away from it, or does it just seem to be cutting out? Does anybody tell? Okay. Okay, good. Perfect. Um, so uh, I'd love to take any questions that you have. Yeah. Right now, you mentioned the Super Bowl. Yeah. Other sports is about to begin, like baseball. What seems to be the biggest buzz, and then what's behind that? The biggest buzz for us right now is is definitely NFL playoffs is hot right now, just because of the we started with only fantasy sports fans. That was our niche target for our alpha. And those guys every day, especially DFS, with, uh, which is daily fantasy sports, for those of you that aren't familiar, they're making lineups every single day and they're talking about stats. Those are the guys that really love using it because every day they've got a new competition that they're talking about. Yeah. Okay, I've got a friend that does uh, uh, Jeopardy and he's got a lot of uh, sports announcing and the families from all over the world listen in. Could this app be used to broadcast the game? Definitely. So we have, we've actually had a few high school, uh, high school teams reach out to us to use Utah so that they can broadcast, usually like the PA announcer that's keeping track of all the stats and announcing people as they, as they come to bat for baseball, for example. And they can use Utah to send out quick audio broadcasts so parents that aren't there, they could listen in. We can create stations for anything. We just started with sports as a uh, very targeted group um, to, to get Utah rolling with. Yeah, the website's utalk.io. Okay, thank you. Yep. I'm sorry, the, and the question was, um, could high school, or was it JUCO announcers at, uh, for college? For high school, it doesn't matter. For, it's, uh, to be able to broadcast a game out to parents who cannot be there, no matter where they are. Yeah, it was for, uh, the question was, could high school or colleges um, send out broadcasts to get updates on games? Yeah, question? Yeah, the question was, do we censor the audio in any way? Uh, currently, w there's a 60-second record time, but we're not censoring any content. We do have strict community guidelines that we uh, inform our users on, and uh, we help our current users are helping to moderate that content. What's interesting, though, is uh, through some of our surveys, we found that people actually like the explicit content to a certain degree, but they, they want it tagged with the not safe for work or flagged in a certain way so they're not playing it around their kids. Yeah, question. That's a great question. So we've, uh, we actually started building our APIs first so that we could, for example, we have a lot of people that want to pull Utalks into their, into their web page so that they can have them listed kind of like you would embed tweets. Um, so we definitely the platform is open for that type, those types of integrations. Yeah, question? Great question. Yeah, that's a great question. The question was, what happens when you start bringing in high volume uh, amount of audio messages? I anticipate that's probably going to be our biggest challenge because audio is different than text and video. You have to actually play it and listen to it. So we need to make sure that we're curating content and making sure we're delivering the right subjects and topics 
to users at the right time. Uh, definitely allowing uh, design, thinking of like a, uh, Reddit does this really well. They've got a crazy amount of volume. They'll trend by new hot topics. Um, and it kind of stealing from that design a little bit to make sure that we're uh, um, allowing that to be curated. Yes? Um, on a global scale, we're looking at soccer. Yeah. You know, how does it work with other languages? Do you support other languages for people who say speak Spanish and don't know what it is? The, the great, we currently don't support other languages from the app standpoint, although there's nothing that would keep you from recording in a different language. Um, and we do have some soccer stations that people are, are posting in right now. Um, that's a good question. We, we haven't really addressed that. We're really focusing on the U.S. right now as we launch. Yeah. Question? So, what kind of privacy and copyright issues are you anticipating? Because when you start getting into, say, like broadcasting NBA Live or NFL Live, is there any chance, I mean, maybe you're small and you don't care, but as, when you start getting momentum big, they start caring about possibly getting into any potential for marketing, what, what that's a good question. I mean, as far as uh, the content goes, it's user generated. So, um, you know, definitely we will own that content from a, a you know, from that standpoint since it's delivered on our platform. Similar to the same thing would work with Twitter, where people can go and actually tweet. We're not actually creating the content ourselves. Th that's a good question. Um, we'll uh, you know address that hopefully when we get to that point. That's a good question. I, I, yeah, that, that's a really good question. I don't know the answer to that one right at this second. Yeah. Out of time? Great. Good. Thank you, Barrett. Thanks. All right, we have Mark with Kilobyte. Mark. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Mark McDougall, and I'm a web designer here in Atlanta. Right now, I'm focusing on mobile-friendly websites for startups and entrepreneurs, but that's not why I'm here today. Today, I'm looking for five volunteers who'd be willing to do some usability testing for a client of mine. We essentially give you $70 for an hour of your time. You come to Octane Coffee House, and we'll record you using one of the websites that we're building and gain some insights from the way you interact with the website. So if you're interested, there's a clipboard at the very back of the room there. With, we'll just need your name and number. We'll call you, see if you're a good fit, and then we'll go from there. Thanks again, guys. Thank you. And now we've got Homes at Law. Hello, I am Joe Holmes. I'm the founder of Homes at Law. I practiced law for 16 years. That pretty girl is my daughter. She was born the same year I started practicing to prove I really haven't done this for that long. Um, I have represented startups and Fortune 50 companies, and I took that experience and developed three things you can find at Homes at Law to help protect and grow your business right now. So the first thing is a free online legal health check checkup to get you started going the right direction. The second thing is an outset package of 10 legal templates and toolkits put together in a bundle for $150 so you can set the right foundation. And the third thing is when you're ready to develop a long-term relationship with a business-minded attorney, we've got prepaid legal service plans starting at $1,500 a month so we can fit in your budget. I'm Joe Holmes of Holmes at Law. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. All right, next up we have Spun. Take it away. Hi, good evening. How's everyone tonight? We are Spoon Utensils. My name is Melissa, and this is my co-founder, Umar. What's up, everybody? <laughs> um, as Melissa said, we're Spoon Utensils. We make calorie counting, nutrition tracking utensils. Um, the way it works is you uh, take a picture of your food using our app so we know what's on your plate. Um, you can have up to four food items on your plate, and then we'll use uh, our utensil uh, to eat, um, and that allows you to detect the weight in every bite of food that you're consuming. Um, that weight is converted to uh, calorie nutrition information, and you'll get real-time feedback uh, regarding your pacing. So if you're eating too fast, you'll get a little buzz, um, and you'll get more, uh, more feedback when you hit your calorie limit uh, for the meal. Um, so a little bit about our, uh, our company. Um, <clears throat> there, there is a solution out there for calorie counting. Um, and that's, uh, you know, there are a number of apps. One of them is MyFitnessPal. MyFitnessPal is about 80 million users logging in um, at least once a week. Um, the way that MyFitnessPal works is that you, uh, after you're done eating, you, you identify a food that you ate. You know, you, you say, like, I ate grilled chicken. And then it asks you, how much did you eat? 
And the question is, um, do you really know? Um, you know, there might, you might say you ate six ounces of chicken breast or, you know, eight ounces. It's hard to tell. So the, where, we, uh, where we come in is that spoon tells you, ident like, accurately, um, you know, what, uh, what you've eaten and how much you've eaten, and then we'll convert that to your calorie uh, and nutrient information. So we'll do a little demo here for you. Okay, he's going to connect the app, and we are demoing it on an Android, so we have the app compatible for iOS and Android. There's a good reason for the Android app first, um, but we'll save that for another time. And right here, we just have some granola. He just poured it out into the bowl. We're going to have to juggle our handsome microphone. Okay, so I have the app, and this is what you would do if you're eating at home, eating at a restaurant. You say, start new meal. See, there's a camera. I'm going to take a picture of the food. He's going to take the spoon out. So in real time, we would identify that this is granola. Um, we're in the process of negotiating our commercial license to the food database we were using. So it's not going to come up now, but we'll get some default value. OK, so what happens, let's say this plate had different items of food on the plate. What you do is you circle the food. Okay, it's identify food stage. That's granola. That's granola. <laughs> All right, so no, it's not berries, but for demo sake, we'll say yes. It's not eggs, but <laughs> at this point, you're going to input what the food is. So it identifies what it is, and it'll have in its database the amount of calories for that type of food and then start eating. So now it has what you're eating. It's identified, and you just start. So it's looking for the Bluetooth device now. So we're, we're number three, so go ahead and connect. OK, so, um, so, this, uh, so we were practicing a little bit ahead of time, but this is the interface that you can look at while you're eating. Um, if you see the yellow, the yellow bubble, it tells you how many bites you've consumed. And, I, and the way we're detecting is uh, gesture recognition. So these are tuned to my gesture. Um, so every time I take a bite, uh, we'll record the weight value that's on the spoon at the top of the gesture. So when, I first, when you first open the app, we'll be like, hey, take 10 bites. So we calibrate to your bite specifically. And then we'll also tell you to take a bite from different quadrants of the plate. So you can have up to four food items on your plate. And using the, like if you kind of think about it from the side, this gesture is different than this gesture. Which, which allows us to tell you what um, food item is on your spoon at the time that you're eating. Um, the red bubbles are the pacing, so you can you know, adjust that. You can change the 20, so like change the 20, it's like plus. So you can uh, pace yourself whatever uh, speed you want to eat between bites, um, and you'll get a little haptic feedback if you eat too fast. Um, so it'll the, buzz in your mouth, and it'll make you stop eating. <laughs> and the, uh, the 400 is the, is the calorie target, and then the, the purple is where the magic happens. So that's the grams on your spoon in the current bite. So here we've got five grams of granola. And then when I, when I take a bite, you'll see the change. So it's, it's at 25 now. It should go to 26 when I took that bite. Uh, no, hold on, hold on. It will. Let's try again. Hold on. Oh, that's really weird. It shouldn't stay at 25. Let's try Let's do it one more time. While he's saying that, are there any questions in the meantime? OK. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, so his question was, how can this tool help diabetics? And it can definitely help them monitor their intake. Since you have all the information about your nutrients, you know how much sugar you're taking, how much carbs. And also, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from different nutritionists and dietitians of how maybe in the future our next step is to connect this to send it straight to your doctor. His question was, how do you know what you're eating and what you're putting on the spoon? So when I took the picture and I circled the different parts of the plate, 
Normally, when you have the different foods, you're going to circle the different foods and identify it. So you'll identify carrots, potatoes, whatever. And like Omar said, when you're sitting down, it uses gesture recognition. So your carrots are in a farther place on the plate than the eggs are. So when you reach for that part, then it's going to know that that's what you're eating. Young lady in the front. So if you're eating something like scrambled eggs, mm -hmm. Okay, so that was a very good question. We get that question a lot. Basically, she asks, how do you count the calories of food that there's mixed ingredients in? Or a lot of questions we have is related to like milk and cereal. Um, and basically, we have an algorithm, part of the utensil, and you have to identify what's the ingredients in your, in your food. And it uses an algorithm to measure the approximate weight of each part. So it uses density and... So I don't know if you guys are watching, but it's working now. It's just a little, uh, I don't know why there's like lag. So it's, it's like, it's catching up after like I take two or three bites. Um, um, our kit retails for $75 and it includes the permanent scent. So that's a spoon and a fork and that's dishwasher safe. You keep it at home and then you have the detachable handle. Hold on, while it's working, you guys got to watch. <laughs> so everybody watch. All right, so we're at 34. All right. Um. So to finish your question, um, you have the detachable handle and you have the ends that you can throw out if you bring it to a restaurant, if you bring it to work, so you have two sets of it. Oh, cool. Yeah, so the handle has all the intelligence. You can plug in your big spoon, your mm -hmm. small spoon, your fork. Um, if you're, you don't want to take it, you know, a dirty spoon with you, you can just throw it out. It's plastic. Uh, usually once a week. So it's 52 hour battery life. Is anybody not convinced that the gesture recognition works now? <laughs> I can keep doing it. I saw a hand in the back. Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, we actually just had a conversation with Under Armour last week uh, regarding the, uh, the APA integrators. That's who actually one of our, our commercial partners that we're talking to uh, for the food database is. Um, so we're, we're hopeful there. Yeah, so we have 15 of these in real life. Six are surviving. These are 3D printed. We took them to CES with us. Uh, they got beat up. Our question was, uh, have we tested with other people? Um, really what it comes down to is, is the initial calibration. So, like, you know, I've, when we coded these algorithms, you know, I was there. I was using it every day. So, like, you know, it's, it's very tuned, and I'm kind of an average height. Um, so, you know, it's really the arm length and the gesture. So it'll work for most people. Um, but once you tune it to your own gesture, it's pretty good after that. Question? We had a lot of demand for chopsticks when we were in Vegas, but we're still working on something like that. Last question in the back. Yeah, the question is, do we have a web interface? Uh, real quick, so we do. Um, the, the applications for that are, you know, doctor, patient, you know, dietitians can log in and monitor remotely what, you know, their patients are eating. Moms can see, you know, what their children are eating. Um, and there's a couple of other applications, but thank you so much for your time. Thanks, guys. Really cool. Uh, now we've got Tim with Telliant Systems. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Tim Myers from the Microsoft Gold Partner and Cross-Platform Competent Telliant Systems. Uh, we support growing and emerging uh, independent software vendors like many of you. Uh, we, what's more is 80% of our business comes from trusted, uh, ongoing customer relationships. Uh, we're in, attractive to companies of all sizes because we're capable of making their applications uh, more secure, scalable, mobile, 
uh, not to mention user-friendly. And we're able to do that at a much faster pace and lower price point than even compared to internal talent. Uh, we do that because of our unique onshore-offshore model of 100 Italian professionals. Uh, we are going to be offering a free pilot uh, prototyping uh, program for one of you. So if you're interested in uh, speaking with me about that, find me afterwards. You can also find our information on the wall back there or visit Telliant.com. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. All right, we're going to finish up with sexy, uh, fast cars. Here's uh, Luxapur. I'm Gabe Fungling. I'm the founder and CEO of Luxfer. It's a luxury and performance car app that we're building right here out of the Atlanta area. The name Luxfer comes from combining the terms luxury and performance. So we decided to take those two terms because to us they describe the best of both worlds in the automobile industry. So we decided to build an app that represents both of those terms. Luxfer is uh, it's two parts. It's one part galleries where we've collected over. Uh, 40,000 different photos for 900 different cars. Uh, it's not just pictures. We've also added a Cliff Notes version of, of the specifications for each of these cars. And the other side is the social media aspect. This is all the things that everybody's already familiar with, uh, posting their own photos, having their own profile page. Um, and we've added a, a, a part of the app called the Dream Wall where people can uh, create kind of a collage, a digital collage of photos that they favorited. It's going to be a free app, uh, available again for Android and iOS users. There's nothing else out there right now that combines the best of both worlds for car enthusiasts. A place where they can look at thousands and thousands of photos and then at the same time be able to post and, 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 and build this community that, uh, of, of car folks that understand them. So we wanted to, 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 to be that place for them. So that's really what, what Luxembourg is all about. It's Cars are pretty exciting, right? So like the video said, my name is Gabe Fungoing. That's a Chinese last name, in case you're a bit confused looking at me. <laughs> Real quick, a little bit about my background before we get into this. Um, for the past several years, I've been working as a solutions engineer for a medical software company here in town. My job there is to basically solve complex issues for large health systems across the country. You know, so I get the question a lot, hey, Gabe, where'd you get the idea to build an app like Luxapur? I tell them, one, I'm a car enthusiast, and two, I spend the majority of my time solving problems, so I just saw this as an opportunity. Look, like a lot of folks in this room, I've been a car enthusiast my whole life. As a kid, I used to love looking at pictures of fast cars and reading about them in magazines like DuPont Registry. And then as the internet grew, I transitioned to websites like supercars.net, and then this mobile thing started really happening a few years ago, so I just thought the next logical step in this evolution would be to find a mobile app that gave me the same experience I had as a kid. Right? But when I looked for it, I was, I was a bit disappointed with the results. And so this is how our journey to build Luxembourg began. You know, we set out to do this for the 100 million plus car enthusiasts around the globe that are dissatisfied with current car apps. Right? For the most part, they're stuck between choosing poorly designed, inadequate apps, web-only solutions, or from one of the many, many uh, car pages of Facebook and Instagram. You know, some of you, some of you in here follow these pages, so you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so our product is the only one that's a combination of community, organized content, and eventually we're going to work commerce into there. Luxembourg is a social platform that's dedicated to uniting the world's car enthusiasts. Most of you in this room understand that the social media market's been fragmenting. We've been seeing a lot of that tonight, but it's also been growing, right? And discussing this very topic, a recent Forbes article read said it's not unimaginable, it's up there, oh, it's over here, it's not unimaginable that companies like these will rise to become powerful forces at the center of many different industries. Okay, that article was talking about one of our direct competitors and a little $2.3 billion app called House that some of you are familiar with. Look, car, people want more specificity. These one-size-fits-all giants like Facebook and Instagram, they're always going to have their place. They're not going anywhere. But the next generation of social apps like Luxembourg, they're growing and car people need a home. Now, I'm sure some folks in the audience are wondering how we plan on making this business sustainable. That's a question that always comes up. Well, you know, growth is going to be our primary objective coming out of the gate. But what we're not going to do is just cross our fingers, 
wait for a million users, and then monetize using ads. We can do it much smarter and much sooner. One of the ways we could do this is by developing our own in-app currency system called Street Cred. Users can earn Street Cred by getting likes and views, things like that within the app. We're basically going to reward people for engagement. They can then use these points to unlock certain features in the app. And should a user not want to earn any, they'll have the opportunity to purchase some. And that's just one of the many ways we could do this. You know, <clears throat> so why are we here tonight? Well, we're looking for the right investor. We're looking for some smart money that's willing to grow with us as we strive to reach our goal of a million users globally. <laughs> I can promise you this. We're not going to be the next Facebook. But if House and Instagram had a car baby, it would look like Luxapur. <laughs> Let's build a better car community. Thank you. <laughs> Questions right here. So make sure I understand the question correctly. Are we going to be the ones curating and generating content, or is it going to be mainly user-driven content? Uh, right now, it's going to be mainly user-driven content. Uh, we believe very strongly in that community. Um, the space is very, um, say, very strong with your car and drivers and road and track, jalopniks, and there's plenty of uh, those other communities out there and people that like to do that. That's, that's not really um, our space yet. We're probably going to tie in and work with a lot of these people to help drive this. Back there. That's a great question. Uh, gentleman in the back there said, I'm a car enthusiast. Why should I download your app? Um, <laughs> it's kind of one of the reasons why we started. You know, Facebook and Instagram, it's mixed in with, and I have four kids. So you can post a picture of a car, and then a baby shows up, and then somebody's dog, right? <laughs> And so car people understand each other, right? We, we speak a different language. And similar to some of the other products you've seen out here tonight, sports people want to talk to other sports people, right? Car people want to talk to other car people. So we, we're trying to build this community where, you know, the family picks can have their place, and I love family, and then the car people can have their space as well. Right. Right. The follow-up question was, they have Facebook groups. Why not just stay there? Well, Facebook is building a product that's for the general population, right? We plan on expanding and doing other things like creating car communities and where you can do car events and things like that. So Facebook is not going to continue to expand and cater to the car people and things that we care about. Right here. Um, it's a great question. Uh, she asked if uh, car clubs can create their own private groups. Um, at this point in time, not yet. Um, we're absolutely going to do that. Uh, a group, uh, there's a group of G8s here in Georgia. It's the type of car. Uh, we told them to push the app, and these guys jumped all over it um, a couple of days after we launched last week, and you know, usage went, went up pretty well. So, right here. question was, what, advance, what advantages did we um, see with going just mobile instead of using a responsive website? Um, we played around with that thought uh, early on. Um, I, we just saw, overall, we saw better performance with just going native than uh, dealing with, um, I, I know there's this really big push and mobile web apps were going to be the thing, and I'm not saying it's not over, but, or that it's over, but um, we just chose to go this route for performance. It's, it's very important to us. I'm sorry. Thank you. I couldn't see him because of the poll. Yes. Oh, okay. The question was, will we have a subgroup for automatic Hondas? So essentially, are we going to sit here? <laughs> Hey, uh, Honda was my first car. Don't roast. Um, station wagon, 91 white. 
my girlfriend stayed with me. No, the question was, uh, again, are we going to have a subcategory for automatic Hondas? Um, eventually, we will. We're going to have, we understand that somebody, we understand that the car community will break into many subcategories. Some people like Scion FRSs. That is like a $25,000 car. Other people love the million dollar Pagani, right? So we have to be able to, we understand that it ranges, the car enthusiast crowd ranges from there, so. Over here. Yes, I'm sorry, man. Yes. Um, that's a great question. How are we going to deal with spam and unsolicited content? Uh, one, you can block users. Um, two, we are constantly, uh, we have a member of our team that, that's kind of his job to make sure that um, the community standards are met at all times. Uh, we got a little test as soon as we launched, like 10 hours into it, and so we swiftly handled that and took those, that content down. You guys, lots of per. All right, that concludes Atlanta Startup Village 34. I'd like to thank uh, the, our sponsors, Smith & Howard, Sales Loft and Hype, their initial and continued support, um, crafted for live streaming, and a special thanks to the Atlanta Tech Village team, Caitlin, Raleigh, Carly, for all that you guys did tonight. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next month. Listen,